Welcome to our presentation on limiting factors and carrying capacity within an ecosystem. What is a limiting factor? There's a couple of definitions here. Uh, the conditions of the environment that limit the growth of a species, whatever that condition is, or abiotic and biotic factors that pre prevent continuous growth. They're basically saying the, the same thing because in an environment or an ecosystem that is the abiotic and biotic. So whatever is it predators, is it food supply, is it water, whatever limits the growth of a species is a limiting factor. Populations will, what is a limiting factor? Populations will continue to increase if they have all the resources they require in unlimited amounts. Of course that doesn't really exist, uh, but there's always some factor that limits their increase. Food, water, shelter, something that they need more of to increase their numbers. Populations always create more offspring than they can really, than that environment can handle. So some will uh, go by the wayside, be a uh, predator, be preyed upon, uh, maybe perish due to lack of food or water, uh, but there's always some factor that limits the number of, the, of, that, of that population. And as it says, limiting factors control or limit population growth. What are some of the limiting factors? This list is, is you know, is, can be even expanded upon, but in general, the, the general ones are food, be light sunlight for plants at the bottom of a forest where the trees are blocking out the sun, but food for animals, whether that's uh, the food that they catch prey or whether they are the herbivores looking for grass or whatever. Shelter, place to hide from the predators, place to have your den uh, for your babies, place to stay out of the, the harsh weather. Breeding and nesting sites, um, certain animals need a certain kind of environment to breed in, and more importantly, uh, uh, good solid places for nests in trees or even in the case of some sort of uh, wood ducks and woodpeckers, a hole in a tree. Water, that can be a limiting factor in a, in a drier condition or seasonally. The weather, harsh, well, the length of harsh seasons, so you know if, it, if you're way up north, the, the cold season may limit how many uh, offspring you can have, so limit your population. Opposite in hot deserts, uh, wet, too wet of a condition, too dry of a condition, these kinds of things are some of the main limiting factors. What is a carrying capacity? Because of the, these limiting factors, each ecosystem has a finite capacity for growth connected to its carrying capacity. How many offspring can live? What's the number of of, of, of a population that can live in this ecosystem. Um, limiting factors, we usually think it's food or water maybe, uh, but I, because I, I moved many years ago into a subdivision that was kind of newly built, so there really weren't any, uh, very few tall mature trees. So uh, there were hundreds of acres of new beautiful grass with lots and lots of earthworms in it wonderful place for robins to feed. So they had food aplenty, but the limiting factor in this um, environment uh, was very evident in this first strong spring storm that you'd come through. You'd go for a walk in the subdivision and you'd see many, many robins nests blown onto the ground by that windstorm the night before. What's the problem? There weren't enough mature trees with big branches where two branches would grow out and have a little crook there for that nest to be a solid place for it to sit. So they were putting nests in less than ideal places and the wind was blowing them out of the tree. So a limiting factor of the population in this environment wasn't food, wasn't water, good water sources nearby. It was the number of good mature trees that you could put a robin's nest into safely. Carrying capacity is the number of individuals of a species that an ecosystem can support. Most of the time, a pop the population is below the carrying capacity because if you get right up to the carrying capacity, you sometimes damage the um, environment and reduce the carrying capacity. Um, and good, a good case in point is like an elk here or the white-tailed deer in Wisconsin. If their numbers get too large in a certain area, they will over browse the available winter food. That's usually the time when food is the scarcest. The little buds and nubs of, of branches that will become a good food source in the future are, are eaten in that winter 
if there's too many individuals around, they cut back then the ability for that environment to produce new food in the future, and the carrying capacity drops for four or five years before that can, the plant growth can recover and the carrying capacity can rise again. So there the limiting factor would be the availability of food in the harshest part of winter, and overpopulation, overbrowsing will reduce actually the carrying capacity for a few years of that ecosystem. Um, again, in nature, populations rarely grow uncontrolled. Each ecosystem has a carrying capacity or a number of organisms it can, can sustain and support. Rabbits, squirrels, foxes, hawks, they're all kind of interrelated. Um, those are the would be the biotic, as it says in the next, remember the limiting factors are biotic and abiotic. The biotic are those food systems, the grass, what, what these things eat. Abiotic would be more weather, water, that kind of thing. And that will prevent the continuous growth of a population. Because of limiting factors, the number of populations, as I said before, organisms population is often well below the carrying capacity.